Today we have a very interesting topic to discuss on and that is growth performance of dopa sheep fed on rangeland grasses with legumes. This topic is drawn from on-farm research that was conducted by Carol team on Kesigao Ranch which is located in Voi sub-county. The team will take us through the objectives, materials and method used on the research and will discuss the results and conclusion drawn on that research. Let's get started. Our objective, we, we used the sheep, which also contributes to meat in, 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 in our country because we have deficiency of, of meat. So our objective was to determine the performance of sheep fed on specifically the African foxtail, which is Sengras liaris, and then bush rye, that is Entropogon macrostagius. And these two grasses, they were combined with two legumes. And these legumes, we had dolcos, lap lap, and cowpea. That is M66. Why did we use these grasses? That is in the Asigao. These are the grasses that can be grown at that place. Because initially we began by planting those grasses and they, they do very well by the by model rainfall that is found in that area. So farmers, they don't have to worry about this because vis-a-vis the, the, -vis this other upland or highland grasses, then they will, the, the farmers will not really be able to maintain those grasses because they require a lot of rainfall. So we chose this because they are adapted to the environment. And then the dolichos and the cowpea, even that little rain that they receive, they actually can harvest. The materials and the methods that we used here, we had six treatments, and these six treatments in every treatment we had three sheep, the dopa. So in treatment one, we had African foxtail and cowpea. African foxtail and cowpea, that was a, a ration or a diet that we, 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 we used for that uh, treatment one, and then treatment two, still African foxtail, but we used dolichos. And then bush rye, we also combined with cowpea, and the same bush rye also with dolichos. So these were the four treatments that we did, and then we now had the control. That is now five and six, they stood alone. We now, we had also a treatment where we only fed uh, African foxtail, and then another one, we also just only fed bush rye. It was a very beautiful and nice one. And this work was done in the Kasgao Ranch, on farm. Feed processing was done by chopping the grasses and legumes using motorized chopper. There is this chopper we use, I know you, you You've seen it. And then the ration we prepared, that is three to one. That is the ratio that we used. Grass was three part, and then legume one part. Those from nutrition, you know that the protein should not be more than one part. If you increase, it is a waste, even us. Eating too much meat is just a waste. Okay. Uh, the weight ration, we fed individual animal in their own pen. And this one, we did it, that's eight in the morning. Okay, the whole total ration, we divided by, by two. If the animal was to eat maybe a uh, 1,000 grams, so we give 500 and then 500 at two. The refusal were weighed in the next morning. You know, this ration we were giving daily for 24 hours. So when you give at eight, we also give <coughs> the remaining, we add, and then we leave it there. And then the following morning is when we come to 
clean, you know, whatever we find in the morning, then that's what was not eaten. And then we, from there we can calculate the daily intake. All animals' initial weight and weekly weights were recorded. That is during adaptation and experimental period. All the 90 days we put there, they, we weight the initial weight and then we were weighing weekly to monitor the, the, the body weight. We used a, a weigh bridge. There is a, a weigh bridge machine. Then average daily gain. This one was obtained by dividing the difference, the final weight and the initial weight. And then what we get, we multiply it with a thousand to obtain, that is in grams. Average daily gain. This is uh, the scenario in Kasgao for those who are not there. And this could be something that we can move forward and, and get details. This is our structure. It was a selected structure. This is how it was. The, the one on the left, that is how they, they were put inside a pen. There was a salt, and then there was a, a trough outside, feeding trough, and then there was water trough also be, besides. On the far left, that is African foxtail and cowpea. It is, it is being, it's being mixed and packed, this one. And then the second photo, a ration is being weighed. So the, the, the huntsman is weighing, this is a weighing scale, and is getting weights, and then here they were being fed. And this one, we took it when the, it was actually at the tail end at the tail end. So the results show that there was, just in general, there was significant difference among different rations given to sheep. Sengra ciliari is the African foxtail, plus cowpea diet. It had the highest daily intake. And then the ADG, 50 grams per day. And then the net weight gain, it was 4.5 kilos. And then the final was 26.7 kilos. That is just the, what we pick from that result. And then at the end of feedlot, this sort of a summary, when we finished everything, this is what Cascao Ranch did. They sold all the 18 sheep that we had in the treatment, they, this, this report I got from the manager, immediately they sold those animals. This was the analyzed, okay, this, the feeds we had, we took them for analysis. And then these are the detail of our analysis we, we, we got. African foxtail, bush rye, cowpea, and dolko. We also have a detail which, which, which I have not shown here, the rations, the individual ration, they also had their specific content, the composition that were analyzed. But here I've picked the individual grasses that we used. And then this one helps us to understand more why they behaved the way they behaved. Because the performance of our sheep and goats, uh, for our performance, our our sheep, they actually relied on the actual feed that we gave. And a very good point that I want you to pick from here is that these grasses, we had some grasses from Kasigao, which we planted there. And because some, they, they, were, they were not sufficient to carry the 90 days, so we also had addition that is from Kaluro Kiboko. And the one we obtained from Kaluro Kiboko, we harvest after we have harvested seeds. That is not the right stage for harvesting. So the nutrient content of this bush rye and African foxtail, their level could be different because of the stage of harvesting. That's a point to note. 
this is performance of sheep in feedlot fed on range grasses and lake Matkaskau. So like the number one African foxtail and cowpea, initial weight, this the first column, th those were the initial weights. So the initial weight, those that were fed with African foxtail, that was 22.2 kilos. And then after the 90 days, it was 26.7 kilos. You can check at the bush rye alone. Bush, bush rye alone, we began with the 22. These are point to note. We began with the 22 kilos, but at the end, it went to 21.0. So that was negative, and this one was just feeding on bush rye alone. This, this was the control. And then African foxtail, it was 24, but you can see it only improved with one kg. And then bush rye and dolko, it began 23. It went to 26. You can see the, the, the differences. So this one, the major thing we can also note here is the direction. You, can, you need to observe here more where we have mixed with legume and where we have given free. And then what do farmers normally do? Farmers normally, you will find where they graze maybe it's just grasses alone. And that's why maybe the animals behave the way they, they behave. So when we intervene with a legume, we make a difference. Uh, this, peak, this, this, this graph, I just want to show what happened. When we began feeding, the intake, obviously the intake was low. And this one is explained by new feed. In fact, the doper sheep, okay, they like, for those that were being fed, they, they were grazing. And then we put them into a confined place. In fact, the first day, most of them didn't eat. They were just looking at food and they slept with the food. But after a few days, they started eating. And then I hear, I just want you to see the trend that when we began, the feed intake was low, but as they continued, it started increasing. Just look at that trend. And then just another point to note, feed intake, you find bush rye. It was low. And then followed by African foxtail. They are just following one another. Even the intake, the feed intake was also low because they were feed without legumes. So here, there, were, there was more feed refusal in sheep fed on African foxtail and bush ripe grasses alone without legumes. The legumes recorded the highest CP content being 21.2 and 23. That's for cowpea and dolcos respectively. Uh, Conclusion and recommendation. Uh, Earlier when we began, we had several things. Some of you, you are here. We met with you several times. There were some theory sessions. When I say Taita Taveta, there are several places we were. In Wundani, Dambwe, that is Taveta, uh, Mwatate. We held some workshops there. Like here, here the last one, this was Taita I think it was, it's called, I'm just trying to give some memory. Farmers were trained on land preparation, planting, grasses and fodder. I think this one was in Kasigao. This one was in Kasigao. And this, this one is also Kasigao. The seeds they were harvesting 
the other day. I was there, that lady is the HR in Kasigao, and it was doing very nice. When you are there, hata kama utakula lunch, unakaa tu unasikia, you planted mvue kanyesha, and there is beautiful grass. Hata kama siyo wewe, you are not an animal, you just feel good. Uh, practical demonstration, this is the, the machine we used for chopping the grass. And this is farmer field school. We are demonstrating how to chop and mix. Collaborative partnership. Taita Taveta County. You know we had a similar work being done in Kajiado and Narok. Thank you for watching. Using these same results, we'll be discussing part two of this video about methane gas emission. Stay tuned for the part two.